Hello and welcome to Anthem Chapter 7. Today we will be reading Chapter 7 and making predictions as to where you think the story uh, will go, um, both from Chapter 6 into 7 and from Chapter 7 into 8. So, as always, you're going to be reading and answering multiple choice questions based on evidence from the text. When you do this, please have your form open at the same time and you can answer your questions as you go. It's better to find the evidence in the text than try to remember later and guess back. Students will make predictions based on information from this chapter and previous chapters. So, how do we make predictions? We make predictions by taking what we already know from the text to decide what you think might happen in the future. So we already know equality lives in a very strict society. It's very controlling. Um, they don't do anything alone. Uh, being alone is like one of the biggest crimes that you can commit in society. Um, we know that equality has to steal away in secret to go into his tunnel to do his experiments and things like that and he fears what will happen to him if he is caught um it's probably not hard to make the prediction of how things will go when he presents his light box to the council scholars right so we made some predictions during our last class at the end of chapter five and six um, when he escaped from the Palace of Corrective Detention, so if you remember, he ended up there because he was late getting back to um, his uh, the home of the street sweepers that night because he was in his tunnel and he forgot to set his his um, his clock basically, and he was late getting back, and they whipped him and punished him because he wouldn't tell them where he was. All right, this is not a happy-go-lucky society. So we made some predictions last time to find out, you know, do you think the council will be lenient and reward him for, you know, his great inventions? Or do you think that um, they will punish him and arrest him uh, and maybe even kill him for all of the secretive work that he's doing? Um, many people went more negative with this and said that he would most likely be um, arrested and possibly killed. Um, some people thought that they would arrest him and steal the invention and, um, you know, use the invention but put him in jail as if their scholars had invented it but not equality. Um, not many people had positive outcomes on this one, but we will see where it goes today. All right, so try to remember what your prediction was. If you are not sure, make a prediction, all right? And we're going to read this chapter to find out how it goes. Okay, so we're going to read chapter 7. Um, and then we will kind of look at um, what happened during that council meeting. It is dark here in the forest. The leaves rustle over our head, black against the last gold of the sky. The moss is soft and warm. We shall sleep on this moss for many nights till the beasts of the forest come to tear our body. We have no bed now, save the moss, no future, save the beasts. We are old now, yet we are young this morning when we carried our glass box through the streets of the city to the home of the scholars. No men stopped us, for there were none about from the palace of corrective detention, and the others knew nothing. No men stopped us at the gate. We walked through the empty passage into the great hall where the World Council of Scholars sat in solemn meeting. So even though we don't have any of the action yet for this chapter, we realize that he starts in the forest. And the only forest that we have in this book is the uncharted forest. So he starts there and then flashes back to the morning where he went to the home of the scholars, um, to the council, um, with his invention. So this is going to help create suspense. This should tell you that if he is in the forest, something probably didn't go right. All right, so this should help you um, continue to do predictions, but that idea of suspense should be created, and you should be questioning, why is he in the forest? What happened? All right, well, he's going to tell us. We saw nothing as we entered save the sky and the great windows, blue and glowing. Then we saw the scholars who sat around the long table. They were as shapeless clouds huddled at the rise of the great sky. There were men whose famous names we knew and others from distant lands whose names we had not heard. We saw a great painting on the wall over their heads of the twenty illustrious men 
who had invented the candle. So if you remember, the candle was their last invention, and that was a hundred years ago. All the heads of the council turned to see us as we entered. These great and wise of the earth did not know what to think of us, and they looked upon us with wonder and curiosity, as if we were a miracle. It is true that our tunic was torn and stained with brown stains which had been blood. We raised our right arm and we said, Our greeting to you, our honored brothers of the World Council of Scholars. Then Collective 0, 0, 0, 0, 0009, the oldest and wisest of the council, spoke and asked, Who are you, our brother? For you do not look like a scholar. Our name is Equalities 72521, we answered, and we are a street sweeper of the city. Then it was as if a great wind had stricken the hall, for all of the scholars spoke at once, and they were angry and frightened. A street sweeper? A street sweeper walking in upon the World Council of Scholars? It is not to be believed. It is against all the rules and all the laws. But we knew how to stop them. So automatically, they hear that he's a street sweeper, and they don't respect him. They don't want to hear from him. They are completely prejudiced against the fact that someone from such a lowly job could be talking to them right now. Um, so they don't want to have anything to do with him, and they've already made up their mind at this point. Our brothers, we said, we matter not, uh, we matter not, nor our transgression. It is only our brother men who matter. Give no thought to us, for we are nothing, but listen to our words, for we bring you a gift such as had never been brought to men. Listen to us, for we hold the future of mankind in our hands. They listened. We placed our glass box upon the table before them. We spoke of it, and of our long quest, and of our tunnel, and of our escape from the palace of corrective detention. Not a hand moved in the hall as we spoke, nor an eye. Then we put the wires to the box, and they bent forward and sat still watching. And we stood still, our eyes upon the wire, and slowly, slowly, as a flush of blood, a red flame trembled in the wire. Then the wire glowed. A terror struck the men of the council. They leapt to their feet, and they ran from the table, and they stood pressed against the wall, huddled together, seeking the warmth of one another's bodies to give them courage. Um, so equality lighting his box, or lighting his light bulb, is scary magic to these people. It's very unfamiliar technology. They do not possess the intelligence to know what causes this. Um, so they run from it in fear, initially. We looked upon them, and we laughed, and said, Fear nothing, our brothers. There is great power in these wires. But this power is tamed. It is yours. We give it to you. Still they would not move. We give you the power of the sky, we cried. We give you the key to the earth. Take it, and let us be one of you, the humblest among you. Let us all work together and harness this power and make it easy, the toil of men. Let us throw away our candles and our torches. Let us flood our cities with light. Let us bring a new light to the to men. So in this novel, um, light has become a symbol uh, for enlightenment, for knowledge. Um, and in this scene, you're going to see that the scholars, they're afraid of that light meaning they're afraid of knowledge. Um, they don't want the light, and they wish to stay in the dark, meaning they wish to stay ignorant. Um, they don't want all of this knowledge to flood into their society. They just want to stay ignorant and stay the way that they have been for hundreds of years. But they looked upon us, and suddenly we were afraid, for their eyes were still and small and evil. Our brothers, we cried, have you nothing to say to us? Then Collective 0, 0, 0, 0, 0009 moved forward. They moved to the table and others followed. Yes, spoke Collective. We have much to say to you. The sound of their voices brought silence to the hall and to beat of our heart. Yes, said Collective. We have much to say to a wretch who have broken all the laws and who boast of their infamy. How dared you think that your mind held greater wisdom than the minds of your brothers? And if the councils have decreed that you should be a street sweeper, how dare do you think that you could be of greater use to men than in sweeping the streets? 
How dare you, gutter cleaner, spoke fraternity 93452, to hold yourself as one alone and with the thoughts of the one and not the thoughts of the many. You shall be burned at the stake, said democracy 46998. No, they shall be lashed, said unanimity 73304, till there is nothing left under the lashes. No, said collective, we cannot decide upon this, our brothers. No such crime has ever been committed, and it is not for us to judge, for, uh, nor for any small council. We shall deliver this creature to the world council itself and let their will be done. Um, so you sh see some of the names that we've already seen, um, Fraternity International, some of those names being um, repeated. So it makes you wonder how many times they reuse the names with different serial numbers. Um, so they may have a set set of hundred names that they use every single year and they just change the serial number based on you know how old you are um so that's something that you should be able to see also in all of their names they are um things that represent their uh their, their um society democracy means that you know the people have the right but they really don't fraternity means brotherhood Unanimity means unanimous, meaning all work together, collective, all work together. So you should see these names and you should kind of understand that many of them represent things and they also represent things that don't actually exist, like equality. Even though equality, everybody in society is equal, it's not equal to the standards that we would consider equal. Right. We looked upon them and we pleaded. Our brothers, you are light. Let the will of the council be done upon our body. We do not care, but the light. What will you do with the light? The leftists looked upon us, and they smiled. So, you think that you have found a new power, said Collective. Do all your brothers think that? No, we answered. What is not thought by all men cannot be true, said Collective. You have worked on this alone, asked International 15537. Many men in the homes of the scholars have had strange new ideas in the past, said Solidarity 81164. But when the majority of their brother scholars voted against them, they abandoned their ideas, as all men must. This box is useless, said Alliance 67349. Should it be what they claim of it, said Harmony 92642, then it would bring ruin to the Department of Candles. The candle is a great boon to mankind as approved by all men. Therefore, it cannot be destroyed by the whim of one. So basically what Harmony is saying is that new ideas can only be introduced if all the scholars agree on it. Um, and he says that if this light box were to enter the society, that then the people in the department of the candles would lose their jobs. So instead of swapping over um, the candle people to creating this new light box and teaching them a new skill, they don't want to learn new ways of doing things. So this explains to you why the last invention of the candle was a hundred years ago and why it's so valuable to them. Mm -hmm. This would wreck the plans of the World Council, said unanimity. And without the plans of the World Council, the sun cannot rise. It took 50 years to secure the approval of all of the councils for the candle and to decide upon the number needed and to be refit the plan so as to make candles instead of torches. This touched upon thousands and thousands of men working in scores of states. We cannot alter the plans again so soon. And if this should lighten the toil of men, said similarity 50306, then it is a great evil, for men have no cause to exist save in toiling for other men. Then Collective rose and pointed at our box. This thing, they said, must be destroyed. And all of the others cried as one, it must be destroyed. Then we leapt to the table. We seized our box and we shoved them aside and we ran to the window. We turned and we looked at them for the last time. And a rage such as it is not fit for humans to know choked our voice in our throat. You fools, we cried. You fools, you thrice damned fools. Thrice in this case means uh, it's the same as twice, except twice is two, thrice is three. We swung our fists through the window pane and we leapt out in a ringing rain of glass. We fell, but we never let the box fall from our hands. Then we ran. 
we ran blindly and men and houses streaked past us in a torrent without shape and the road seemed not to be flat before us but as if it were leaping up to meet us and we waited for the earth to rise and strike us in the face but we ran we knew not where we were going we knew only that we must run run to the end of the world and to the end of our days then we knew suddenly that we were lying on a soft earth and that we had stopped trees taller than we had ever seen before stood over us in great silence then we knew we were in the uncharted forest we had not thought of coming here but our legs had carried our wisdom and our legs had brought us to the uncharted forest against our will so at this point he'd rather save his invention by jumping through a window um, than let the council have it because they'll destroy it uh, he absolutely underestimated their reaction and never once thought that the situation might end badly so here is the place to come back to was your prediction correct from last week all right or the beginning of class today um, our glass box lay beside us we crawled to it we fell upon it our face in our arms and we lay still we lay, lay thus for a long time, then we rose, and we took our box and walked on into the forest. It mattered not where we went. We knew that men would not follow us, for they never enter the uncharted forest. We had nothing to fear from them. The forest disposes of its own victims. This gave us no fear either, only we wished to be away, away from the city and from the air that touches upon the air of the city, so we walked on our box in our arms and our heart empty um so here we've been foreshadowing the escape by coming back to the uncharted forest several times um they've also kind of touched on the idea that the uncharted forest disposes of its own meaning every time it's spoken of it's spoken of that people once in a while go there they don't return animals eat them you know they starve whatever um so that's an idea of how do you think this is going to turn out for him? Do you think that he's going to starve? Do you think this will be bad for him? Do you think they were lying before or do they just not know? Okay. We are doomed. Whatever days are left to us, we shall spend them alone. And we have heard of the corruption to be found in solitude. We have torn ourselves from the truth, which is our brother men. And there is no road back for us and no redemption. We know these things, but we do not care. We care for nothing on earth. We are tired. Only the glass box in our arms is like a living heart that gives us strength. We have lied to ourselves. We have not built this box for the good of our brothers. We built it for its own sake. It is above all our brothers to us, and its truth above their truth. Why wonder about this? We have not many days to live. We are walking to the fangs awaiting us somewhere among the great salient, uh, silent trees. There is not a thing behind us to regret. Then a blow of pain struck us, our first and only. We thought of the golden one. We thought of the golden one whom we shall never see again. Then the pain passed. It is best. We are one of the damned. It is best if the golden one forget our name and the body which bore that name. So he remembers after all of this that he has left Liberty behind and he feels a great pain without her. However, he also feels that it's better for her to stay in her society and not have anything changed and not be damned with him. All right, so now's the time. You know, were your predictions correct before about how things would end up with the Council of Scholars? Um, if not, that's okay. Um, but now chapter seven leaves you on a cliffhanger. He's run into the forest and, um, you know, he doesn't know what's going to happen to him. We don't know what happens in the forest. We don't know what is in the forest uh, or if they know the skills to be able to survive it. So um, I want you to predict what you think will happen in the next chapter uh, for chapter eight and nine. How do you think things will go for equality in the forest? Do you think he will go back for um, liberty? Uh, do you think he will find a new society of people? What do you think will happen? Um, and we will wait and see on the next um, chapter. For now, make sure you finish your form, and we will see you in the next installment. Have a great day.